of your life to, to pay this debt off. So then you become a doulos. The, the owner then takes you to the doorpost of their home. They, they grab an, an awl, like a nail of sorts, drive it through your ear and, 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 and in, that, in your earlobe, and that would become a mark that you voluntarily chose to serve this person for the rest of your life. So this paralyzed servant that we're reading about, that's the choice that he's made. He's, 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 he's become a lifelong bond slave, bond servant to this Roman centurion. Now, here he is. This is a man who, who's lost everything. He was in debt. He's, he's used everything he can to pay off his debt. He's, he's, he's given all of his money. He, he's, 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 he's given his home. He's given his land. There's nothing left. He's given his life. And on top of that, now he's lost his ability to work. He can no longer work off this debt. Now listen, some of you uh, in your life, you know what this is like. You, you, you've been in a place where, where you, you got yourself into a hole. And you've been trying to climb out of that hole. You, you, you dig and you dig and, and, and finally you're starting to make some progress. You're, 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 you're starting to make some headway. You're, you're, you know, you're paying off this bill. You're starting to pay off that debt. There's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And just when it seems like things might be starting to turn around, boom, you get blindsided. Something else happens. You know, just when it seems like there's hope in sight, all of a sudden the doctor tells you there's a tumor. And, 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 it's, and it's cancerous. Or, 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 or that car that you've been trying so hard to pay off, but you still owe money on, it breaks down. And now you're trying to figure out how you're going to fix that. And it seems like it's one thing after another. That's where this centurion is. I'm sorry, his servant is. But the centurion looks at his servant and he realizes that, that his servant does not need uh, debt consolidation. He doesn't need budget counseling. What he needed was Jesus. So he, he brings his servant to Jesus. And so this is really not a story so much about a healing of a paralyzed man as much as it is about the faith of this centurion who brought his servant to Jesus. So now the story continues. Luke chapter 7, we'll pick it back up in verse 6. It then says, Then Jesus went with them. And, and, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent his friends to him, saying, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter my roof. Therefore, I did not think myself worthy to come to you. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I, I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And, and, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that, that followed him, he said, I say to you that I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And those who, who, were, who were sent returning to the house found the servant well who had been sick. And so here's the centurion. This, this is a man who's, who's used to, to, to giving orders, right? I mean, he, he's the captain of a hundred men. This is a man who's not accustomed to hearing the word no. I mean, he, he's used to giving orders and people jumping at those orders. And, and he was backed by the power of the Roman Empire. And so this is a man who, who very easily could have come to Jesus and said, you know what, look, look at me. I'm a Roman centurion. I'm a commander. I'm giving you a direct order. You come with me. I'm commanding you to heal this person. But that's not what he said. Instead, he, he turns to Jesus and says, Lord, I'm not even worthy for you to come under my roof. Now, the word worthy here uh, is, is a very interesting Greek word, hykonos. This is a word that, that means qualified or uh, sufficient or enough. In some contexts, you could say it means large enough. So here's this man. Even though he's a Roman commander, a Roman centurion, he did not see himself as large and in charge. He, 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 instead, he, he, he comes and, and, and he says, you know, I'm not worthy. In fact, that word, worthy, when he says, I'm not worthy, it's the same word that John the Baptist used on another context in, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, when, when John the Baptist pointed towards Jesus and says, he who is coming after me is mightier than I am, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Keep in mind, it was John the Baptist who also said, he must increase and I must decrease. So this word worthy uh, it, it literally paints a picture of balancing scales. In, in those days, you'd go to the marketplace to buy something and how you would determine the worth of the object that you were buying is that you would put it on one end of the scale. 
And then on the other end of the scale, you would keep placing your coins and you'd place coin after coin after coin until finally there was enough weight on the other side to balance out the scale. And once the scale was balanced out, that was the worth of the thing that you were buying. And so when this commander says, I'm not worthy, he's saying to Jesus, he's like, you know what, compared to you, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm not worthy. I mean, if you're the standard, if you're on this end of the scale, I'm never going to measure up. I'm always going to fall short. I'm not worthy of you. And, and so what we see is, is, that, is that this commander was humble. In fact, I think that was the key to his faith. This commander was humble. He didn't roll in like, you know what, if you knew who I was, if you knew who I worked for, if you knew how powerful I was, you would do what I say. And he says, Lord, I'm not worthy. Now, in contrast, this reminds me of another commander in the scriptures. There was, in the Old Testament, we read of a, of a, of a, of a, of a commander by the name of Naaman. Um, and, and, and Naaman, in 2 Kings chapter 5, this is the commander of the Syrian army. He was, he was the, the right-hand man of the king of Syria. And yet, he had a problem. His problem was he had leprosy. And yet he hears that there's this prophet by the name of Elijah who, who, can, who can heal him. And so he, 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 he goes to Elijah's house hoping to be healed by this prophet. But Elijah won't even come out of the house to talk to him. Instead, Elisha sends his servants to talk to him. Well, now, Naaman gets a little offended. And he's like, don't you know who I am? I mean, you know, don't, don't you know how powerful I am? Don't you know who I work for? I mean, you know, and, and the message that, that, that was sent was, hey, you know, just, just go bathe yourself seven times in the Jordan River. And Naaman's like the Jordan River. We got better rivers at home. You have to understand that the, the Jordan River was kind of, you know, it was kind of murky. And I'm being polite. I mean, in that day, it was, it was muddy and, 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 and murky. And, 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 and he's like, you know, we got cleaner rivers. We got, we got, we got nicer rivers, you know, where, where, you know where, where I'm at. You know, it's kind of like, let me, let me put it in the Colorado context. It's kind of like saying, go baptize yourself, go bathe yourself in the South Platte. Now, years ago, uh, at our church, uh, we did several of our baptisms in the South Platte River. And we would say, hey, this baptism, you're going to smell it for a week. Um, and, so, and so that was kind of the context here. He's like, you want me to go get in that thing and, 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 that, and smell like that? And so he, he, gets, he gets offended. But now his, his servant kind of talks some sense into him and says, listen, it's a small thing that he asks. Just, just do what he asks. So he humbles himself, and, and ultimately he gets healed. But, but Naaman was this man who was full of himself. He, he was full of pride versus the centurion that we're reading about. This is a man who humbled himself. Lord, I'm not worthy. Reminds me of 1 Peter 5, verse 5, when it says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I'm led to believe that, listen, if you want to see God do a work in your life, if you want to see the Lord move in your life, you want to see God, you know, heal whatever's happening in your life, I'm not saying that you will be healed of this or healed that, but you want to see God work in your life, I believe it starts with humility. Real faith is grounded in deep humility, humbling yourself in the sight of the Lord that he might lift you up. As, 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 as Dwight Moody used to say, we may, we may be easily too big for God to use, but never too small. And so I believe it starts on your knees. Lord, I'm not worthy. Rather than you're in this situation and, and, and things have fallen apart and you're like, you know, Lord, how can you let this happen to me? I mean, Lord, I've been going to church every week now. I mean, Lord, I, I even looked this word up in the Greek and, and now, and now you, 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 you let me lose my job. I mean, I don't deserve this. But rather, it's, Lord, you know, if you're the standard, if you're on this side of the scale, no matter what, I will never measure up. Lord, I'm not worthy. I believe great faith starts with great humility. Amen? So we'll walk around and, and we'll see 